Toma deki kota de se paibe vishnu bhakti aro samharile tara chiran tana shakti mabu gozan about waiter. That Matura Nivasi was supposed to achieve devotional service to Vishnu by seeing you, but you even destroyed whatever spiritual strength he had. Laya Charana Duli Tarikailakshaya Samhara Karite Tumi Parama Nirdaya. You destroyed him by taking dust from his feet. You are most merciless in the act of destruction. Hanata Brahmande Jata Ache Bhakti Yog. Sakala Tomari Krishna Dila Upayog. Krishna has readily endowed you with a devotion found in innumerable universes. Tatapiya Tumi Churi Kara Kudra Stan. Kudra Samharite Kripa Nahi Vasaman. Yet you steal from an insignificant source. You have no compassion when it comes to destroying an insignificant creature. Maha Dakaite Tumi Chore Mahachor. You are a great bandit, Mahadakait, and the greatest of all thieves, Mahachur. You have stolen my ecstatic love, Churi Prema Sukamor. You have stolen the happiness of my love. He Matachali Kai, Susatya Vachan, Shunya Anande Base, Bhagavatagan. As Mahabharu spoke the truth under the, some pretense in this way, the devotees floated in ecstasy. Mahabharu goes on. Tumi se karila churi, amiki na pari, heradheka chorera upari karan churi. You have stolen. Why can't I wait and see how I steal from a, as a, from a thief? Speaking to a waiter, Hita Bali Advaitere, Apanaidaria, Lotaye Charana Duli, Hasia Hasia. After saying this, Mahabharu grabbed the waiter and laughed as he took the dust from his feet. And you can imagine this 23 year old, 7 foot tall, lion like Brahmin grabbing this 90 year old man. <laughs> Ninety-year-old, ninety-year-old Brahmin grandfather, you know, seven feet tall, and robust, powerful, long arms to his knees, a, a Janu Lumpita, <laughs> no way and way to could escape the loving embrace of the Lord. Mahabali Gora Singhe. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Gora. Gora Singhe, Gora Singha, the lion like Gora. Mahabali Gora Singhe, Advaita Napare, Advaita Charana Prabhu, Gase Nija Shire, Charana Dere Vakshe, Advaita Re Bale, Heradeka Chora Bandi Lama Nija Kole. Karite Takai Churi, Chora Shatabar, Barike Grihasta Saba, Karaya Udhar. And Waita could not compete with a powerful lion like Gore, who rubbed and weighed his feet on his head. I guess he just picked him upside down. <laughs> Sounds like he just took it away to flipped him upside down. That's how you get somebody's feet on your head, you know. Right? Holding yeah, it sounds like he holds some little kid, you know, like a mother holds her kid by the ankles and swings him. Mother such used to do that sometimes. Right. Yeah, because it just says he took the dust. I don't know. So here it says who rubbed away his feet, holding away his feet to his chest. I mean, that's like if you're holding somebody upside down, you can hold her in <laughs> or he's on the ground. He said, See how I have captured a thief in my embrace. A thief may steal hundreds of times, but a householder retrieves everything at one stroke. A thief steals many times and gradually accumulates various items. In order to take, in order to take revenge for the thief's repeated thefts, the householder retrieves everything from his house. Sri Chaitanya is most powerful, Gora Singha. And Advaita is less powerful. Therefore, Mahaprabhu forci- forcibly and openly held Advaita's feet to his chest. Now we're going to hear something from Advaita's side. What does he have to say about all this? Advaita Balaye Satya Kahila Apani 
Tumi se grihastami kichui najani prana budi manadeya sakala tumar kera kibe prabhu tumi karile samhar hari shara datta tumi tumi deyatap tumi shasti karile rakibe karabhav naradari jaya prabhu dwara kanagare tomara charana dhana prana deki bare Tumita sabara lao, chara nara duli, se sabaki kari, prabhu se ami bali, apa nara sevika pane jabe kao, ki kari be sevikai, sevake, apane bhavi chao, ki daya chara nara duli, se rahuka pache, kati te tomaragya kon jana ache, tabe je mata kara, nahi takurali, Amara samhara haya tume kutuhali. A way to reply to Mahaprabhu. Whatever you have said is true, but you, are, but are you a householder? I don't know anything about that. My life, intelligence, mind and body all belong to you. O oh Lord, if you annihilate me, who can protect me? You are the giver of happiness and distress. If you punish someone who, whose father can protect him. O oh Lord, when personalities like Narad visit Dwaraka to see your lotus feet, which are their life and wealth, you take the dust from Narada's feet. Then what can they do? This is my question. When you destroy your own servant, what can he do? Please consider. Or to speak of taking dust from your feet, who can even transgress your order? But when you act in this way, it does not increase your glories. As I get annihilated, you take pleasure. So the weight is saying that I'm not, you're not a householder. Everything belongs to you. So you, I, I belong to you also. Tomara se deha tumi rakava samhar jay tomara icha prabhu tahi tumi kar The weight said, Mahaprabhu, this body belongs to you. You may either protect it or destroy it, O Lord, do whatever you wish. Vishambara bali to me, bhaktira bhandari, hiteke tomarachara nera sevakari. Vishambara replied, Advaita, you are the storekeeper of devotional service. That is why I serve your lotus feet. Bhakti bhandhar. This is bhakti bhandari. Bhandara. Bandari means he's he's a storekeeper of bhakti. Tomara charana seva, so I serve your lotus feet. Tomara charana duli, sarvange le pile, basaye purusha krishna prema rasa jale. So Vishnubar is glorifying it. Wait now, some few verses, five verses. If one smears the dust of your lotus feet over his body, he will float in the mellows of ecstatic love for Krishna. Krishna Prema Rasa Jale, Basaye Purusha. That Purusha, that person will Basaye, he will float in the Jal, Rasa Jal, Prema Rasa Jal. Krishna Prema Rasa Jal will float in the waters of Krishna Prema Ras. Bina Tumi Dile Bhakti Keha Nahi Pai, Tomara Seami Kehena Jana Sarvartai, Sarvatai. If you do not distribute devotional service, no one can attain it. Know it. Know that I belong to you in all respects. To me, ama jata vat becha tatai vikai. He satya kahilam tomara setani. You can sell me wherever you like. I tell you this in truth. Mahaprabhu said, Advaita, please consider me your property. As a merchant, you can sell me as a commodity wherever you like. You are the only administrator of the storehouse of bhakti. If a living entity follows your service attitude in all respects, then he will bathe in the nectarine mellows of ecstatic love for Krishna. I am telling you the supreme truth. Advaitera pratideki kripara vaibhav apurva chintaye mane sakala vaishnav. On seeing the extraordinary mercy bestowed on Advaita, all the Vaishnavas were astonished. And then they commented on the pastime. Satya sevi lena prabhu e mahaparush koti moksha tulianahi e kripara lesh. 
this great personality, Advaitacharya, has truly served Lord Chaitanya. For a fraction of the mercy he received cannot be compared to millions of liberations. Kadachit e prasada sankari se pai jahakari advaitere shri gorangarai Shiva rarely receives such mercy as it wait to receive from it wait Goranga Rai. Because uh, in another form, wait to prove is Sadashiva. Mahavishnu is also Sadashiva. So this is an extraordinary mercy that and wait is getting to embrace Radha Krishna Yugo, Radha Govinda Yugo in the form of Mahaprabhu. Rasaraj Mahaprabhu Mahabhav. So Lord Shiva, so Shiva doesn't he, he worships in Hanta Shesh. He gets to embrace a snake. This <laughs> is Shadev is in Hanta Shesh. He wears around his neck also. But for him to embrace Radha Krishna is most difficult. And it only happened in one brief instance where he could even have darshan of Radha Krishna Yugo. And it took a lot of adhikar eligibility to get that darshan. He had to come to Vrindavan and perform austerities and the months were over. Sometimes people say Brahmakund. And then he got blessed by Yoga Maya and the Sakis and he was given a Gopi Roop, Gopi Shwar. And he was allowed entrance into the into Vamshiva to see the Leela by the mercy of the Gopis because he had suitable Deha. He had Gopi Deha and Gopi Bhav. Some Gopi Bhav. Not Mahabha, but some Gopi Bhav, Braj Gopi Bhav. So he was allowed to see Radha and Krishna Yoga, but he couldn't go up and embrace them or embrace Krishna. He didn't dance with Krishna as a gopi. That that's quite a very high adhikar. So then again, he was after that he was posted by Lord Krishna to be the the, uh, the guard of the Rasastali Gopeshwar. He's right there. His place is right next to Vamshiva, just to the left on the street is Vamshiva. It's the same in the transcendental eternal topography of the spiritual world. Everything is located in the same uh, same proximity to each other. Down the street, to the right of to the right of today, Skopi Shwari, go down the street, and to the right, and then back a little bit to the west and up on the hill. There's the old Govindaji Mandir, the old one that's sort of vacated now because of, it's broken by the Aurangzeb, and the deities moved behind another temple. <coughs> but that temple is called Govinda Stali, which is described in Govinda Lila Marita. It's a yoga pit, evening yoga pit, yoga pit. And the Yamuna comes from the north and breaks into two branches. One goes to the, to the north and the south, and they meet again. And they, in the middle, they embrace an island like structure called Govinda Stali, or yoga pit. And that rises from the banks of the Yamuna, the yoga pit rises like the back of a turtle. You know, turtle's shell goes like this, and then like a, like a bell curve comes up like this and goes down so at the top of that is Govinda style there's an eight petal lotus in the middle there's a mandir and all this that's where the Divya Brindaranya Kalpachu that's where that puja goes on Radha and Krishna and they they come down from that little hill and they wander along the banks of Yamuna and they come to Vamshivat and Jumuna Pulina and all the they have the Rasa dance commences there so that they go down there and walk towards they walk towards Gobishwar. And further on then there's the, the, the banyan tree, Vat. And the Yamuna's there, then Krishna's there and he calls the gopis. Now that's that's all connected. And the same thing is there in the spiritual world like this. And Brahmakund is also Brahmakund is right outside the wall of Sri Ranga. Sri Ranga, that South Indian temple, is kinda of stuck in the middle of the yoga feet <laughs> configuration. <laughs> Because it's, Gov- it's Govinda Stali, then there's a big boundary wall of this uh, Shirangam South Indian temple. And, but that was new. It wasn't always that disc came. It was built in the 1930s or something like that. But then it goes so many times, it was all forest. So it was the Govinda Stali, and then forest, and then it was Brahmakund, it was dug, and very deep, right right on the outside the wall. And that's the actual distance, the proper distance. So a certain distance from Govinda Stali is Brahmakund. It's a more distance as Gobishwar, a little more as Vamshiva, a little more as Jumuna Pulin, Dir Shamir, then Jumuna. Jumuna moved a little bit, but it used to be all there, right at Vamshiva. 
So it's even today it's arranged and basically it's described as north of north of um, situated north of Govindasthali is Gopishvar and situated north of Gopishvar is Ramshivat. And that's how it is today also. When I used to live down there I would walk all around those places and think about all these things. It's very really nice that downtown area. It's very rich in Sevakunj and Rasastali and Nidivan and Sringarbad. Divine area. That's where all the six Goswamis Swamis lived. Everybody, everybody lived there since 500 years. That's why that was the core. The core of Vrindavan was right there. That's the core area. That's why he developed so much because it's the intensity of the gurus and Siddha Mahatmas that lived there, and then their chelas that would gather around them, and then and then the visitors would come to visit them from different cities, Agra and other places. Visit visit them in the holy places, and then all the service. People in the stores open up to sew blankets. Loi bazaar, loi means blanket. Loi means blanket, like kumble. They used to be just sewn blankets, you know, 200 rupee blankets and stuff. There was no mukut, there was no mukut while was there at all. It was just blanket shops. And loi bazaar, there's out kumba, there was loi bazaar, and there's, and there's anan bazaar, anaj, anaj mandi. Naj Mandi, that's where they sell grain, grain market. And the Chandi market was over down near Atkamba, near um, Bhagi Vihari's side. That's where they sold them, could and all those things. Anyway, it's all ancient history now. <laughs> Interesting to hear about something. <clears throat> mm. Okay. So the... Um, Devotees are glorifying and wait Charya. All the devotees are there observing this wonderful exchange with, and Shiva Sangam. It's a very intimate exchange with the two Prabhus. There's the teen Prabhu. The teen Prabhu, they're all Vishnu Tattva. They're all really, all really one. Eko Bahusham. Krishna expands into four Tattvas and five Tattvas and one Tattva and unlimited Tattvas. The four Tattvas is Chaturvyuha, Sankarshan, Vasudev Sankarshan, Pradyum, Nani, Ruta, and then there's the Pancha Tattva, is Mahabrabhu, and then Nityananda, Dvaita, and then Shakti Tattva. There's the three Vishnu Tattva. The three Vishnu Tattva are called Team Prabhu. The three Prabhus usually they're together when you see on the altar. You'll see Chaitanya in the middle, and, and then Dvaita on the right hand side, Nitin on the other side. Because they have to have that configuration when the three of them are there. And it's going to be on the left. But generally, when it's done the Panchatattva, then all the senior Vishnatattva are to the right, in terms of adhesion, that thing. So, a team Prabhu, they're often worshipped together. You see three. And they're wor- in the Yoga Pit in Mayapur, they're worshipped them together. There's a team Prabhu Mandir in the Yoga Pit, in the Yoga Pit meditation. So, here, a one Vishnatattva is worshipping another Vishnatattva. Ranga's worshipping Advaita, <laughs> like Krishna worshipping himself, Krishna worshipping his Purusha avatars, Krishna worshipping Ananda Shesh, Krishna wor- worshipping Sada Shiva, Ranga is Krishna, Radha and Krishna, so Radha and Krishna worshipping Sada Shiva, Radha and Krishna worshipping Shiva, Radha and Krishna worshipping Mahavishnu. So like people say, oh, I, I only worship Radha and Krishna, I don't worship Lord Shiva. <laughs> and Mahavra, Lord Shiva, is worshipping Advaita Charya. <laughs> Interesting point. So the devotees are uh, glorifying. They're watching this. And it's amazing. I'm not, it's not clear. I guess if we meditate more in this pastime, we, I would assume he wouldn't just pick him up, as I said, because that's a little bit too much like American wrestling. <laughs> that uh, Lord Chaitanya would go and pick up, would wrestle him down on the ground and grab, <laughs> grab him by the ankles and pick him up, hang him upside down. He get kind of dizzy. Get, the old man get dizzy and get a headache. I guess it's more like he, he embraced him and then they fell to the ground in the embrace and while they were kind of scuffling and rolling on the ground, and then you know he took his feet and held him to his head. And, you know, so they're all he's in a very because he has regard. He's regarding that weight as his guru and as a worshipful lord. Lord Chaitanya is not going to hang your, you know, go and pick up your guru, but <laughs> don't go and flip your guru upside down. All this prasadam comes out, you know. So the devotees are watching this whole thing. It's quite amazing. 
this Lord Chaitanya and wait they're rolling on the ground and running after each other's feet and then everyone knows that they're at this point in juncture in that time everyone knows who they are they're actually descent of the Lord Vishnu Tattva Amara o bhagya vanta hena bhakta sange o bhaktera paraduli lai sarvange the uh, Bhakti Sangha or the Bhagavad Gan, a group of devotees gathered there together with watching this wonderful event, exchange of love between Bhagavan and Bhakta and Bhakta and Bhagavan. He said, We are fortunate to have the association of such a devotee as Advaita Charja and Bhagavan. We are all very, very fortunate. We take the dust from this devotee on our entire body, Sarva Ange. A bhaktera paraduli lai sarvangi. We forget about putting the dust on our heads. We want to smear the dust on our whole bodies. This is chapter 29. Chitam sukena bhavata paritam grihe shu. Yanirvashat yuta karavapi griya grihye. Paro param na chalatas tava paramulad. Yama katam vrajamato karavama kimwa. A gopis, they're speaking. Until today our minds were absorbed in household affairs, but you easily stole both our minds and our hands away from our homework. Well, this is actually, this is the gopis replying when Krishna met them in the beginning of the Rasa dance. He said, oh, why have you come here? You've come to see the beauty of the forest. Well, now you've seen it, now go home. Besides, there's dangerous creatures here. Oh, have you come to see the full moon? Oh, and then he said, oh, you have sumadhima, slender waist. You shouldn't be in a place like this. Your relatives must be wondering where you are and worried about you. It's not safe. You should go home. So then the gopis reply in the Pranaya Gita. And in that same chapter, say, wait a minute, you're telling us to go home, but listen. Until today, our minds were absorbed in household affairs. Till today, when you went to Vamshivad and played your Murali and called us here. And now it's too, it's too late. Well, we could get into our domestic duties, into our families and taking care of them and our households and mother-in-laws, etc. And you called us, you summoned us here with your Murali, with the sweet sound of your Murali, and now we've seen you under the full moon night of the shard season. It's too late. But you easily stole both our minds and our hands from our housework. Now our feet refuse to move one step from your lotus feet. So how can we go back to Brudge? What would we do there? So they start revealing the intense attachment that they have for Krishna. Although he's pretending that, gee, you know, why do you came? Swagatam, welcome, gopis. It's, well, it's strange to meet you here in the middle of the night. Well, they didn't say reply and say, "Well, it's strange to meet you." I mean, what a, what a coincidence! You, we were just wandering through here at twelve o'clock at night, and so were you, and and we bumped into each other. You're from uh, Nandagram, aren't you? Yes, I, I am. How, how do you know? <laughs> Are you from Varsana? Yes. <laughs> I think you look familiar. So he's playing like. And, and he starts preaching to them, Dharma, listen, the, the highest duties of a wife is to take care of her children and to look after her husband, even if he's old or invalid or sickly. Or, and, uh, you, and if you don't follow Dharma, you won't go to the heavenly planets. So behave yourself. And go home. So he's say, play, saying all these things externally like, oh, I don't, I don't really care. You know, what are you doing here? And you're, It's not a good place. And they, when they replied to him, they said, listen, okay, very nice. And they told it like it is. They spoke straight. Krishna was speaking like a standard Indian person. You, know? you say one thing, but you mean something else. But the, <laughs> the gopis, they were telling straight from the heart. They, our, you stole their hearts, our feet refused to move. And as the verses go on, they say, listen, you're playing this flute all the time, and you called us here, so with those same lips, we want you to shower, shower our lips our flute-like lips. We want you to play music on our flute-like lips with the nectar of your lips. Please fill our hearts with the nectar of your lips as you've... Our bodies have holes also. The flute has, Your flute has nine holes. And our, we are... I, Bamshi is a feminine name. Murali is a feminine name. So my name is Bamshi Saki. My name is Murali Saki. And your bamboo vamps has nine holes. I also have nine holes. 
and you put your mouth to the flute and you play and beautiful music comes out. So put your mouth to my, to my mouthpiece of my flute and make me beautiful music come out of my flute. And the ecstasies of Shrinkaras and Ratikeli and the Kunjas. So they are straight revealed their minds. This is what it means to relish topics about Krishna. Prabhuvara Maharange, Krishna Kata Mangala Prasange, Aneka Rahasya Kari Advaita Sahita Ashesha Prakare Tana Janmaila Prita. Nityananda exchanged many confidential topics with Advaita, which may be what I just told you. They're talking about the Bhagavatam. What do the devotees do when they get together? They don't talk about the sports or the Bombay movie news. They talk about the Srimad Bhagavatam. The Yamala Puranam. This is the most relishable subject for the devotees because it's all about Radha and Krishna's love. Confidential topics. Rahasya, rahasya topics. Tabe Advaitera Stane Lai Anumati Nityananda Ailena Navadvipa Prati. Thereafter, Nityananda took permission from Advaita and departed for Navadvip. So he's accomplishing so many purposes. His main purpose is to go meet Shachi. He expressed that desire when he was, after visiting Gadadhar Das, Pandit, and India, India Yadaha Gram. He said, Oh, now, boys, come on, let's, let's, get, let's get in the van. <clears throat> I think Mother Sachi's a good cook. Let's drive up to Mayapur and get some good food. And we'll do some Harinam over there in the streets of Navadri for all the fish eaters. All the Bengali fish eaters will do some Harinam and all those Durga worshippers down there at the, uh, that uh, temple there, Protomaya, Protomaya temple where they slaughter all the goats in central Navadrip there. Every Amavasya chop all their heads off. Heads are rolling, literally. So let's go there and do Harinam. We, we, we get nice prasanam at Sachi's house. Oh, that's a great idea. And they all jumped in the van and Nityananda drove off to, drove off to Mayapur. And on the way they said, oh, someone said, oh, Look, we can get some good food from Mother Shat, from uh, Mother Shachi. I mean, um, Sita Devi, and waiter's wife. Or, hey, oh, Nityananda, take this exit, exit 108, on the Mayapur freeway. That's that goes to Shantipur, and that's it's about 20. It's only a small small exit to the side. It's only 20. We're only 25 kilometers from Mayapur. So let's stop and surprise it. Wait to try it. Nityananda says, "Oh, that's a great idea. I haven't seen it die in a while." So they. Puts in an over, you know, overdrive, and they go on to Shantipur, and all the Sankirtan devotees they roll out of the van. Jai Nitai, Jai Advaita, Jai Prabhu. And Sita says, "Come, come, sit down." Sankirtan devotees, it's something like that. But they're not in the Sankirtan van; they're walking, because and they're not going from Russia to to China to Vietnam and all over the place. So they're not flying and going by cars and vans. They're not going from New York to San Francisco or from northern Australia to southern Australia. They're just walking down the street, walking down the road and chanting and dancing. And naturally, whenever devotees go somewhere, they want to meet devotees. When you go somewhere, the first thing you want to do is meet the devotees. You go to Bombay, and as soon as you get to Bombay, you call up your devotee friends. Oh, I'm here. What's happening? Let's have a program. You tell your wife, to, and you know the guy's wife is a good cook also. So you say, look, you know, let's have a program at your house. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe your wife can cook something. Maybe, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'll see. I'll try to find out. You know, but Come over at 8 o'clock. We'll have kirtan class and prasad. So this is what they're doing. So now he's taken permission from Advaita because Nityananda is junior by age, so some... So they're both Brahmins and Advaita is a big Acharya, the Acharya of all of Shantipur and large number of devotees. So Nittai is taking his permission as is the standard in Indian hospitality. That one, one is a guest and he's leaving the house. He says, please, I beg your permission to leave. And whatever. And then the other person, the host will cry <clears throat> and walk out with the person. He'll escort the <clears throat> he'll escort his host. He'll carry the ba- the host will be carrying his bag, and then as they walk out the door, then they they hit the roadway, and then the host will take the bag out of the. He'll carry the bag some a little distance. Oh, let me carry your bag, and the host will carry the bag of his guests another hundred meters down the road, and then he'll, then he'll stop. The host will stop and say, "Well, wait a minute. 
don't go, come back, come back, let's go back and stay another, stay another day or two with me. And then the person who's, the guest who's leaving to go to some other village or return to his own home, he'll, he'll look at his host and say, all right. And he'll turn around and change his plan and change his whole itinerary and go back and stay another day or two. Probably told us on one tape. So this was Vedic culture in the old days and families were visiting. They would, es- they would escort, they would walk with a guest not, not Sunguru, just a guest. Your uncle comes, your relative comes. You walk with him down the road, and he's maybe carrying his bag or his servant. Then you say, oh, no, let me carry. And then, then you, at a certain point, you stop and say, oh, let's go back. Then he says, no, give me my bag. No, no, I have your bag. Let's go back. Come on. And he feels so much love and so much attraction. And he, he's forced by that love to go back. Okay, I'll go back. <laughs> but nowadays, it's like, bye. Okay, don't come back. You, yeah, take my permission. You want my permission to leave? You, you take it and don't come back. <laughs> Different mood. So now, finally, Nittai walks that 25 kilometers. It's a standard Braj Yatra one day's walk. When you're on the Braj Mandal Prikama, or maybe Navadri Prikama, I forget. But oftentimes they walk 20, 25 kilometers every day, which is not very long. It's maybe six hours walking or so, six, seven hours, to the next halting place. So he walked for a few hours and suddenly Se Mate Sarvadye Aila Aistan Asina Maskari Lena Aira Charan Nitai first went to the house of Mother Shachi and offered obeisances at her feet. Ai 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 Nityananda Sarupera Deki Shachi Ai Kiananda Pai Lena Taranta Nai On seeing Nityananda Sarup, Mother Shachi's happiness was boundless. Antanai, Antanai, Antanoi, Antanoi. No end to her bliss seeing Nitai, because seeing Nitai means seeing Gore. Nitai Gore, Nitai Gore. Because seeing Nitai means he's coming from Puri, and her son Shachi Nandan is in Puri. So seeing Nitai means seeing her son, because you see by hearing. She will hear so many wonderful stories and anecdotes and glories of her illustrious son, Gauranga, from the lotus mouth of Nityananda. She was happy to see the bearer of good news and happy to see Nityananda because she loves Nityananda like her own son. Aibale bhaptumi satyanta yami tomare dekite icha karilanami Mother Shashi said. And remember... And Nittai is maybe 40 years old in this juncture. And Tachimata is about 65, 70. My dear son, you are certainly the Antriyami. For I was just thinking that I wanted to see you. I was just thinking and desiring to see you. Itcha. Tomare Dekite itcha karilana ami. It was my itcha. Oh, sometimes we say someone comes, I was just thinking of you. I was just thinking, oh, I want to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time. And then you came. So, same thing is happening with Mother Shachi. Mora chitta jani to me, aila satwar, ke tama chinite pari, samsara bitar. You understood my desire. And you immediately came here. So you must be the super soul. Because who knew my desire except the super soul? I didn't tell anyone. I didn't express externally my desire. My itcha was internal. Antar itcha. Internal desire. Others may not know our desires, but Krishna knows our desires. He knows our heart. And Mother Shashi is expressing that I, I didn't tell anyone I did not express outwardly my desire and my wish to meet with Nityananda. Well, just now, suddenly he's come. So only a super soul knows my desire. That means the super soul knows my desire because it's internally and silently spoken. It's a wish. It's a desire in my mind and heart. And God knows all of our desires and wishes and aspirations because he's living there in our heart. And he's in the heart of everyone and everything and every atom. 
So he can make any kind of divine, fantastic, miraculous arrangement to bring about the fruition of our desire or the fulfillment of our aspiration. This is the power of God, unlimited. So therefore, she saw Nityananda not merely as in a mood of her son or the close friend of... Because it's considered that when Vishwarup left, then Nityananda kind of became a Vaisha of Vishwarup. Became kind of like the brother of, of Goranga, being elder also, elder in age. So she's seeing Nityananda as the super soul. Oh, you must be the super soul, because only he knew my desire, and now you've come. So similarly, we will have the same experience. We have desires, and we want to see someone or meet someone, then the super soul will make an arrangement. He'll inspire the other person. Oh, I, I haven't seen someone, you know, the, the person from inside the heart of the other person. Super, old, super soul will give the inspiration. Oh, why don't you go see so-and-so? And you'll think, yeah, I haven't seen so All of a sudden you start thinking, I haven't seen the, this Swami in a long time. I think I should go see him. And then, then you come. Then that's oh, and the Swami thinks, I was thinking of you. <laughs> so the super soul is bringing the two together. And so she's recognizing that, so she's saying, you, you are the super soul. Of course, spiritually speaking, it's also true. It's not only an expression of her mood and understanding of the arrangement, but also Nityananda is a super soul because he, he's Shri Dakshay Vishnu. Shankarshan Balaram becomes... Mahavishnu, Garbhadakshay Vishnu, and Super Soul, Antriyami. So, who in the world can understand except you? Kata, Dina, Taka, Bhap, Navadripa, Vas, Jina, Toma, Dekon, Muni, Dashe, Pakshamas. My dear son, stay in Navadrip for some days so that I can see you every 10, 15, or 30 days. She wanted him to stay for some months. She didn't expect the Abadud Nittai would actually come there with a party of six members to engage in Harinam Sankirtan and Prachar, preaching. She did not expect him to stay at her house, but she wanted him to stay in Navadri. She didn't say in Mayapur or with me. She said, please stay in Navadri for a few months. And then I can see you every 10 days or 15 days or every 30 days. Which means every month or so I'll see you, which means that you'll be here for a few months. So it's a nice way of saying, don't go. It's a very very poetic and beautiful way of saying, don't go. Toma dekon muni dasha paksha mase. Dasha, dash means 10 days. Paksha means, a paksha means shukla paksha and krishna paksha. 15 days krishna paksha means the section of the group. Half the month. One section of the month is dark moon. Krishna Paksha. One section of the month, or one section 15 days, is Krishna Paksha, dark moon. And the other section of the month, also for 15 days, is Shukla Paksha, which means white, or the full moon time, and the moon is waxing to full moon. On Purnima. So she's saying, stay for a Paksha 15 days, or stay for a Mas, Ekmas, Domas, so I can see you once a month or every 15 days, or every 10 days. So this, she's showing it. She, by saying this, she's saying, I really want to see you. Muni, do, now, but why? Someone might say, well, why does she want to see Nittai? He came to preach and, and he, has, he can't stay there with, with Shachi day and night. He has six men with him, Brahmins and preachers with him. They have work to do. They have seva to do. Prachar. So why is she so determined and interested to keep Nityananda nearby so she can have his darshan? Ramanas Thakur answers that question. Muni duki nira itcha tamare dekite deve tumi asijacha duki tarite. O son, I am so distressed and desire to see you now by the arrangement of providence. Daiva, you have come here to remove my distress. Dukatarite, 
You have come here to free me from my unhappiness. So what is that unhappiness? Unhappiness is that her husband is gone, left the world. Her eldest son has gone and left the world. And her second son has gone and left Mayapur to stay in my to stay in Puri, far away from Bengal. So she's Duki Lena, and she's very unhappy in the absence of her husband and two wonderful sons. Shuniya Aira Vakya Hase Nityananda Jai Jani Aira Prabhavera Adi Anta. On hearing Shachi's words, Nityananda smiled. For he knew the beginning and end of Mother Shachi's glories. Nityananda Valeshuna Ai Sarva Mata Tomare Dekite Muni Asi Jachon Hita. Nityananda said, Shuno Ai. Sarvamata. Listen, Mother Shachi, you're my mother. You're the mother of everyone. I have come here specifically to see you, my mother. Mora Bhara Ichatoma Dekite Hetai, which is true because we heard when he was in in uh, this village of Gadadhar Das, he expressed, Oh, I want to see Mother Shachi. And all of a sudden it they're supposed to go out preach the conditioned souls and he left one devotee's house now he immediately wants to go to Mother Shashi's house and stopped at waiters. I had a great desire to see you here. Therefore, on your order, I will stay in Navadvip. Tomara Agya Hena Mate Nityananda Ai Sambashya Navadvipe Brahmena Ananda Jukta Haya After speaking this way Nityananda happily wandered throughout Navadweep. Nityananda Sambash. Navadweep Ramana. So tomorrow we'll hear about Nitai's Navadweep Brahmana Lila. The wandering of Nityananda in Navadweep. This is Chaitanya Bhagavat, Auntie Lila. Chapter 5, verse 493. We're hearing about the Advaita, the Advaita Prabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, Milan, Leela, and Shantipur, Dham, West Bengal, 525 years ago. Advaita Vakya Bhuji Bhara Shakti Kar Janiha Ishvara Sane Bheda Nahi Janra who has the power to understand the words spoken by Advaita Charya in his glorification of Nityananda? Indeed, Advaita Charya himself is non different from the Lord. Hena Mate Dui Prabhu Vara Maharanghe Viharena Krishna Kata Mangala Prasange Mangala Prasange Prabhuvara Maharangi. In this way, the two Prabhus, Advaita Prabhu and Nittai Prabhu, joyfully relish the auspicious topics of Lord Krishna. Viharena Krishna Kata Mangala Prasange. The Bhagavad Gita contains the Tattva, the Tattva Siddhanta of Bhakti, especially in the seven chapters in the middle, chapter 7 to excuse me, the six chapters in the middle, chapters 7 to 12, is all about bhakti. And in those chapters, there's the Chatu Shloka verses of the Bhagavad Gita, the ten key verses, which some Acharyas say are all about the Braja Gopis, their activities and their absorption and their seeing Krishna and everything. And everything comes from Krishna, including Mahabhav and Sringharas, Ahamsarvasya Prabhavo. Not only the Aishvarya and majesty and opulence of the creation and universe of all its vibhutis and powers and Vriyata Rupam and these fantastic avatars and Purush avatars, but even the essence of, essence of everything 
comes from Krishna. The essence of everything is not merely creative power and creative expression, but the essence of everything is love. And the essence of Krishna's love is Radha. And the essence of Radharani's love is Mahabhav. And the essence of Mahabhav is Unmad. Unmadani Radha. So this is told in the ten, chapter 10 of Bhagavad Gita, verse 8. Everything comes from me. Ham Sarvasya Prabhu. Up to that extent. Up to the extent of Radharani and her Mahabhav. Which is her sole contribution to Krishna's essential experience of love which is the Braja Prem of the gopis. And then it goes on, and then it says, Machita Matkata Pranas Bodhiyantas Parantapa. Kata, Kata Yanta, how's it go? Kata Yanta Shamam Nityam Tushanti Cha, Ramanti Cha. And this verse, it says that the, the devotees, they, the Machita Matkata Prana Bodhiyantas Parasparam, the uh, devotees, they derive great relish and bliss by talking about Krishna. And no one does that more than the gopis. They develop so much relish, they become so much kata vesh, lila vesh, that they enter the kata so deeply when they speak about Krishna that they actually see him. And they're so deeply entering into the Ramanti experience, tushanti cha ramanti cha, the tushyanti, that hearts meant, that's heart mind satisfaction that only they can know because of their intimate connection with Krishna. They also experience Ramanti. Ramanti means conjugal bliss. So when they're talking with about Krishna amongst themselves, this gopis, gopis prasanga, it says, Mangala prasange, that when Nittai and Advaita came together, that was considered Mangala prasange. They're very tightly connected in the most auspicious form of union which is centered around the glorification of Radha and Krishna and Vrindavan. And this is their Vihar Krishna Kata. This is their own Vihar. Maharange Vihar. Nittai in a way to relishing these topics. So no one relishes the topics of Krishna Kata more than the gopis and they experience for them the Mangala Prasange, the topmost expression of auspicious association is Ramanti. And that's the intimate divine union of Krishna and Radharani in Madhurya Ras. That is the Mangala Prasange, most auspicious Prasanga. And when one talks about, when the gopis are talking about Krishna, and Krishna Gata, they are really Machita Matkata Pranas. Their Chitta is fixed in Krishna. Mat, Machita means Mamchita. Their consciousness is fixed in me, the gopis. This verse describes the gopis. Chapter 10 of Bhagavad Gita, verse 9. Machita Matkata Pranas. And their prana is mixed in my my prana. Their hearts are mixed in my heart. And that means pranaya. Sneya man pranaya. Rag anurag bhav mahabhav. These are seven steps of prema. So they so much they're mixed and hearts are melted with Krishna. When they're engaged in Harikata, in separation from Krishna, their hearts are so much melted and so much unified in oneness, one pran, ek pran, with Krishna, they experience ranga. They experience the conjugal delight of union with Krishna, even in the kata, amongst themselves. So in the same way, or a similar way, Advaita Prabhu and Nityananda were joyfully relishing the auspicious topics of Lord Krishna. And this is going on, devotees. So we see the Gita, although on one level I was giving an example of the Leela of Gita, but Gita establishes a principle that when, when devotees, when it's a generic, it's a statement, it's an axiom, when devotees get together and talk about me and absorb their consciousness in me, uh, kata, and talking about me, then what happens? They feel satisfaction and complete inner bliss and joy. Mental satisfaction, heart's elation, heart's joy, and full bliss in the heart. Peaceful, peaceful fulfilled minds and satisfied and saturated ha- hearts ha- Saturated with happiness by engaging in Hari Kata. Now that's the precept. Now what's the example? So the example is the Srimad Bhagavatam and in Venu Gita when the gopis are speaking about Krishna or Brahma Gita or in this uh, Pranaya Gita when the gopis are separated from Krishna in the Rasa dance that was in chapter 29 and the gopis are separated and are searching for him. There is Pranaya Gita I believe chapter 29 
And they're asking, oh, have you seen Krishna? And then they became Krishna. They became so much absorbed in Krishna. One gopi became Krishna. And the other took them, under Yogamaya's influence, took the Bhava, Putana. I'll kill you. Hey, out from here, Kaliya. One became Kaliya. So they became so much merged in much chitta, much gata, prana, that their prana and chitta completely became Krishna's chitta prana. So this is the, this, that's why it's called Pranaya Gita. There is this section up where the gopis are speaking. This is their Pranaya, which reveals their Pranaya Prema. Their intense Shringar Prema and Pranaya. And that's in, uh, that's in the, in the tenth canto. There's so many Gitas. So that's chapter 29. And then we can just exactly. It's chapter 29. And 20, 29 is Pranaya Gita. Chapter 31 is Yugal Gita. I mean, Gopi Gita. And 35 is Yugal Gita. And then we have 30, not, 47 is, is Brahma Gita. And chapter 39 is Viraha Gita. So this Pranaya Gita is there in chapter 29, which is the beginning of the Rasa dance. Krishna meets with them and then he dances with, starts starts to walk with them and then suddenly he, Radharani disappears and he leaves, finds Radharani, then he favors her and offers to carry her wherever she wants to go. Then he disappears and they go mad searching for him. So this is the, the Pranaya Gita. This is a story of Maharaj Bharata and the black deer. While still in the prime of youth, it said he was 24 years old, Bharat Maharaj gave up his beautiful wife, palace, kingdom, and all royal opulence. He retired alone to the Haridwar and spent his time at Pulaha Ashram. He used to collect various flowers and twigs and tulsi leaves and water from Gandaki and offer these things to Krishna. He was very satisfied. He had no desires for material pleasure. By his continual bhakti, he developed love for Krishna and experienced some symptoms of bhava. His hair would stand on end and tears would flow from his eyes. He was always meditating in the beautiful reddish lotus feet of Lord Krishna. He forgot, it says, when his mind dove into the lake of ecstatic love, he forgot about the rules and regulations of Vaidhi, because he's living on a platform of Bhav. Maharaj Bharat looked very beautiful, dressed in deer skin. One day, while he was chanting, a pregnant black doe was running in fear of a lion's roar. When that doe leaped across the river, it dropped a baby in the water because she was pregnant. It was a miscarriage. Maharaj Bharat felt compassion for that struggling deer, baby deer. He brought it back to his ashram. He used to take care of it. He was feeding it grass and protecting the deer and became very affectionate towards it. He was always trying to arrange for the comfort, and he would sometimes even kiss the deer out of love. He was so absorbed in caring for his deer that he gradually forgot Krishna and gave up all his practices of spiritual life. He was thinking, oh, this poor deer has no relatives. It knows no one but me. I am the father, mother, brother, and relative of this deer. The deer has full faith in me. I must take care of it and raise it properly. So he was so attached to the deer that Maharaj Bharat, he would sleep with the deer, bathe, he bathed it, walked with it, even ate his food with the deer. He is completely bound with intense love to this deer. He always took the deer with him into the forest to protect him. He was attracted to the childish behavior of the deer. Sometimes he carried on his shoulders, keep it on his lap while he was sleeping upon his chest. He felt great pleasure from fondling the little animal. It sounds like people and their dogs in America. He was always careful. If he was doing some activities, he would get up and search for the deer to make sure he was safe and sound. And at night he would bestow blessings on the deer. May you be happy in all respects. 
One day at sunset he couldn't find the deer and he became mad searching for it. He started remembering the playful antics of the deer and said, Oh, when will that deer come back to pacify my burning heart? When I was pretending to meditate, the deer would fearfully touch me with the points of his soft horns. He got up from his reverie and searched for the deer. And he saw the footprints of the deer and started glorifying them. And he saw the dark spots on the moon and reminded him of his black deer baby friend. Somehow, he, due to his past sins, he gave up the worship of Krishna. His Prabhupada karma came to him. Or let's say, in closer inspection, we could say that due to his intense attachment to that deer, he started to neglect his spiritual life. He was wandering about, searching for the deer. In the middle of the night, he fell off the a cliff and he was dying, lying upon the ground. And suddenly the deer came sitting next to him, lamenting like his son, watching his father about to die. Bart Mar- Maharaj became absorbed in thinking of the deer. And next life he became a deer. The black deer, who was formerly known as Bharat Maharaj, the emperor of the earth. It's a very special deer that somehow or other he didn't forget his previous life. He could remember all the past activities and sometimes he would repent within his mind. That little black deer would think in his mind, Oh, I fell down from bhakti in my last life. Gave up my palace and family and everything and practiced Krishna consciousness. But due to my foolishness, I got attached to this deer and I became one. So repenting in that way, that deer eventually became detached, or let's say that Atma became detached from the deer's body. He returned to the ashram, Pulaha Ashram at Haridwar. And that uh, deer, let's say Maharaj Bharat, or the Atma of Maharaj Bharat in that deer, he was uh, carefully avoided any bad association. Finally, he gave up his deer's body, and in that body of a deer, he was praying as follows. As Gajendra in the eighth canto of Bhagavatam also remembered some prayers that he had previously recited when he was inhabiting the human body of a king in his previous life. Somehow he remembered. So, somehow, Maharaj Bharat, now stuck in the body of a deer, could remember a beautiful prayer. And he spoke that at his last moment before dying in his dear body. The Supreme Personality of Sri Krishna is the controller of the entire creation. And Sri Krishna is the Supreme Soul residing in every living entity. And Bhagavan Sri Krishna is the personification of sacrifice and mystic yogi, yoga. And Krishna is so beautiful, Sham Sundar. Now, by destiny, I am leaving this body of a deer, offering obeisances to my Lord Sri Krishna, and hoping that I may perpetually engage in Sri Krishna's eternal loving service. Janpadiya Takura Padila Ganga Maje Nityananda Haridasa. Janpadila Pache, Mahabru jumped in the Ganga, and Nitinanda and Haridas jumped in behind him. Atevyat, Atevyate Nityananda, Darilena Keshe, Charna Chapia Dare, Prabhu Haridase. Beautiful scene, if we're seeing this, because I often tell about absorbing ourselves in scriptures and just try to envision, visualize the scene. They're in Shiva Sangam which is across the street, across the field, the Ganga was flowing there at Mahaprabhu Ghat and Jagai Madai Ghat. It's only 100 meters, 200 meters dash, 300 meters dash to the Ganga in those days, maybe less. Well, very fast, very quickly, Nuragaranga ran, his hair flying, his long hair, his shoulder-length long black hair flying, his yellow chatter and dhoti. He's running, oh, so much distressed look on his face, diving in the Ganga and then, 
this old Haridas, this old person, somewhat old, quite a bit older, Nityananda, 10, 12 years old or so, 20 years older maybe, running behind him with their blue dhoti and Haridas wearing white, like Lungi and skinny old guy. And they're running, short, skinny, I guess, I don't know, hard to say, I don't know how skinny he was, but <laughs> probably had nice features. But they're running and they jump in. And what, what happened? Nityananda caught Mahabharu by his hair. Kesh Dari, like Haladar, Murlidar, Kesh Dari, grabbed him by the hair. And Haridas grabbed the Lord's lotus feet. Grabbed him by the hair. That means there's some hair, some long hair there, not just a Sika. Dui Jane Dariya, Tui Lanai Tire, Prabhupali Tomarava, Darile Kishere. Nitai and Haridas carried Mahabharu out of the water, whereupon the Lord said, Why did you restrain me? Why did you hold me? Ki kariye rakiba prima, rahita jivan, ki sere vatomara, darile duijan. For what purpose should I maintain this life, which is devoid of love of God? Why did you two hold me back when I wanted to drown in the janava, in janavi? Na prema gando stita rapi me haro, trandami so bhagya baram prakashitum, pam shivilas yanana lokanam vina, bibhar me yat prana patanga kan brita. This is Madhya Lila Mahavru speaking. My dear friends, na prema, na prema ganda, I do not have the slightest scent of love of God, prema ganda, na prema ganda, dharapi meharo. I do not have the slightest tinge of love of God within my heart, not even the slightest fragrance. When you see me crying in separation, I am just falsely making a show. I'm exhibiting my great fortune, krandhami sobhagya bharam prakashitam. Krandhami, I'm crying, kranda. But it's sobhagya. It's I'm just trying to show my sobhagya, my good fortune. How how fortunate, how laden with good fortune I am. Sobhagya bharam prakashitam. But it's all a show. It is all false. Indeed, not seeing the beautiful face of Krishna playing his flute, Vamshivilas Anana Lokanam Bina. So Lokana means seeing. Without seeing Anana means face. Bamshi Vilas, without seeing that face of Shamsundar who's engaged in pastimes, of love, Bamshi Vilas, in his love filled pastimes of playing his Bamshi, I continue to live. I'm not seeing his face. I'm only making a show, crying. I don't have a scent of, even the slightest fragrance or scent of love of God. I'm only making a show. I'm not, indeed, actually, I'm not even seeing the beautiful face of Krishna playing his flute. Vamshivilas yanana lokanam bina. Yet, I continue to live. Therefore, my life has no purpose. My life is just like an insect. Bibharmi yat prana patanga 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 kan brita. Patanga means butterfly. Patanga. So they call kites or called patanga also means butterfly. So this was a reply of Mahaprabhu after he was rescued from drowning in the Ganga by Nityananda Avadud and Haridas. Haridas grabbed the Lord's lotus feet and Nityananda grabbed him by the hair, held him by his wrapped up his hair, his top knot, and they dragged him out. Dui jane maha kampa, aji ki bafale, nityananda dega chahi, gora chandra bale. Haidas nitai trembled as I thought, what will happen today? Looking at nityananda, gora chandra spoke. Tumi keni darila, amara kesha bhare, nityananda bale, kene jaha mari bhare. Mahabharu said, Why did you grab my hair? Nityananda replied, Why did you try to kill yourself? 
Prabhu Bali Jani Tumi Parama Bival Nityananda Bali Prabhu Shamaha Sakal Mahaprabhu said, I know you are most restless. Nityananda said, O oh Lord, Prabhu, please forgive me. Jare Shasti Karibari Parasara Mate Taralagi Chalad Nija Sharire Chadite. Nityananda continued, Do you want to give up your body because of someone that you can easily punish? Abhimane Sevakera Balilavachan Prabhutahi Lahibeki Brichera Jivan. If servants speak something out of pride, does their master take their lives? He's referring to Advaitas. Prema Maya Nityananda Wahi Prema Jal Jara Prana Dhana Bandhu Chaitanya Sakal. Filled with devotion for, for filled with devotion, Nityananda shed tears of love for Lord Chaitanya, who was everything for him, his life, his wealth, and his friend. Jara Pran, Jara Dan, Jara Bandhu. So his very life force is Lord Chaitanya, his very wealth of his life, the meaning of his life is Lord Chaitanya, and his only friend and most dear friend is Lord Chaitanya. Prabhu Bale Shuna Nityananda Haridas Karostane Karapache Amara Prakash Mahabhu said, Listen, Nityananda and Haridas, do not tell anyone that you have seen me. I think they want, he wants everyone to think that he drowned. Amana de Kilan Bali Bali Bavachan Amara Agaya E Kahiba Katan Mahabhru goes on. Tell everyone that you did not see me. You follow this order of mine. Muniaji Sangope Takibe Eitani Kare Pache Kahajari Mora Doshanai. Today I will hide here. If you tell anyone, then do not blame me for the consequences. E Bali Prabhu Nan Tanera Ghare Jai. He dui sangop koila prabhura agyai. After speaking in this way, the Lord went to the house of Nandanacharya. Following the Lord's order, Haridas Nittai kept a secret. Bhakta Sabha Napaya Prabhura Udesh Dukamaya Haila Sabe Sri Krishna Avesh. Absorbed in love for Krishna, Sabe Sri Krishna Vesh, all became full of distress when they were unable to receive any news about the Lord. So they were absorbed in love of God. That's their stayibhav, their permanent devotional position. But when they didn't get any news, Prabhu Udesh, they became dukkamaya, full of dukkha, unhappiness. What a beautiful scenery it is. You know, if you're watching a movie, you know, there's three are there, and the Lord runs out, and then, and then they, Nitai and Haridas come back, and they say, well, what happened? Where's the Lord? Don't, I don't know. Didn't see him. Though. Disappeared somewhere. I think, oh, really? Yeah, really. I'm, oh, this is terrible. Parama virahe sabe karena krandan keha kichu nabalaye pode sarvaman. All the devotees began to cry due to feelings of intense separation. Parama virahe sabe karena krandan. No one said anything as their hearts burned. Pode sarvaman. Their hearts and minds were burning. They couldn't speak, they couldn't say anything, all were crying, crying, crying. Sabara upara jena haila brajapat maha aparada haila shanti puranat. Everyone felt like they had been struck by a lightning bolt, vajrapat, and it waited. The Lord of Shantipur, Shantipur Nath, thought himself a great offender, because this was the whole exchange between Advaita and Mahaprabhu, and cause Mahaprabhu was complaining about not feeling any love. And then the wait says, "No, we all we all have the love. You have the love also. What are you saying?" And then, then not understanding or 
Advaita is feeling now, oh, I, I've caused the Lord to disappear from everyone. So now he's feeling himself a great offender, Mahaparad. Aparada haiya prabhu prabhura virahe upavasa karigiya takilena grihe. Feeling that he had committed an offense, Advaita Prabhu went home and fasted due to intense separation from the Lord. It's amazing how Vrindavan Thakur, in so many different instances, he talks about offenses. Of course, on this level, this is all Leela. There's no question of offenses. How can one who loves, loves you completely and you love them completely, there's no question of any actual apparat or offenses possible in the true sense. But he talks about it where there's actual offenders. Devotees, sometimes he's, Pashandis, they offend devotees. Gopal Chapala and Haridas was offended, and some people get leprosy and their noses fall off. And, and Devananda Pandit made an offense to Srivas and threw him out of the assembly in the Bhagavatam Saptaha. So there are actually genuine Vaishnava apparats committed, and there's so much warning and care being taken to describe them and to alert us to the severity of making Vaishnava Aparad. But then there's even offenses being discussed among the Lord and His eternal associates. This is, of course, much more difficult to understand. But their responses are something we can learn from, that that if, if one makes an offense, he feels bad. And if he doesn't feel bad, that means he's not, he's not a devotee. Because <laughs> this is all about devotees. When devotees make offense, they feel bad. The genuine devotees. So with Vaita, of course, is Bhakta Panchatatva Kam Krishna Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam, Bhakta Avataram Bhakta Kyam and Mami Bhakta Shakti Kam. It says Bhakta Avatar and Advaita. They're all Bhaktas, they're all the greatest devotees of the Lord. So they feel that, oh, I must have made some apparat to the Lord. And then what are, how do they respond to that? Ah, okay, I, I offended this guy, so what? And life goes on. Where's the Mahaprasad? <laughs> no, they. They don't. They don't. They, they don't eat. They can't eat. They don't think. Oh, okay, hey, you know, you really offended that devotee the other day. Ah, that's what you say. I mean, they, he's just sensitive. He's hypersensitive. I didn't offend him. That's. They don't. Come on. Let's let's take prasad. Don't worry about that. So we may have these kind of responses in our modern day times, uh, due to our own lack of devotion and perception, devotional perception. But he felt that he committed an offense. And how did he respond to that feeling? Did he overlook it and shrug it off and pass it off? No, he went home and fasted. He started fasting due to intense separation from the Lord. Sabe chalila gare, shoka kuli haya, goranga charana dana, ridaye bhandiya, filled with lamentation, shok. Everyone returned to their homes with the treasure of Goranga's lotus feet bound in their hearts. That's certainly a desirable treasure for all of us to have bound in our hearts. Goranga Charana Dhan, that's the treasure of Goranga's lotus feet. Goranga Charana Dhan, and where do we want that treasure? Ridaye Bandi, Bandia, Band, band Sambanda, tied up, locked up, secured. In our hearts, Ridaye, Ridaye Bhandia. That treasure we pray for, we hope for. Goranga Charanadhan. Takura Aila Nandan Acharya Ghare Vasila Asiya Vishnu Kattara Upari. Mahaprabhu arrived at Nandanacharya's house, which incidentally is about one kilometer down the street from Shiva's Pandit's house. So he's not that far away from everyone. <laughs> he's gone not even maybe one kilometer on the same street. You can visit that house, Nandanacharya's house. It's after you go past this kind of keep going a little further. Next major temple on your left is Nandanacharya's Bhavan, or the temple commemorating that. That's where Nityananda was hiding, remember? Nityananda, Nityananda came, he was on pilgrimage of India and was in Vrindavan, Nityananda Vat, Sringarvat. And when he understood that Lord Chaitanya was now initiated by Ishra Puri at the age of about 19 or 20 years old, Lord Chaitanya returned to Navadvip and he was an, a new man, changed person. And he had closed his Sanskrit school and become interested in Sankirtan. And then Nityananda returned to join him. <clears throat> the time was right. 
Lord uh, Mahaprabhu was about 19 and Nityananda was about 30 or so, 35. So Nityananda came and hid himself in Nandanacharya's house and he wanted to see if the Lord could find him. It was that famous pastime where Lord Chaitanya said, Oh, some great personality has come to Mayapur. Everyone go search for him. So everyone went house to house. This is an earlier pastime. They're searching for this great personality. And then he came back and said, Mahabra, we went to every house, we searched everywhere, we can't find this great personality you're speaking of. He said, all right, come with me. And Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu started a big kirtan party and they went down the street about one kilometer, marched into the, into the courtyard, into the vestibule of Nandanacharya's house and, start, and Lord Chaitanya start, started chanting, Nittai, Nittai, Nittai. Then Nityananda came out from hiding and said, Goranga, Goranga. And then they embraced. It was a beautiful meeting. And everyone said, who is this Nittai? Avadut. So that's where they met. So now Lord Chaitanya is going to the same house and hiding himself also in Nandanacharya's house. So what did he do when he got there? He went there and he sat on the singhasan of Lord Vishnu. Nandana Dekhiya Grihe Parama Mangal Dandavatahaya Padila Bhumital Seeing that the most auspicious personality has arrived in his house Nandanacharya offered obeisances by offering Dandavats on the ground. Satvare Dilena Ani Nutanaya Vasana Tita Vastra Edilena Sri Shachinandan Nandanacharya quickly brought new clothes for Sri Shachinandan, who then changed his wet clothes. Remember, remember this, because it's all, we're reading it verse by verse, but it's all happening quite fast. Lord Chaitanya ran out of Sri Thakur's house, jumped, ran across the street, jumped in the Ganga, hired us, and Nityananda grabbed him by the hair and feet, pulled him out, had some dialogue with him, and then he ran away and told him, keep it a secret, don't say where I've gone. Keep, don't tell anyone. So now the Lord's run away. So then the camera switches to the, the devotees. Well, how do they respond to this? They're all crying. They can't speak anything. And they're very unhappy and they're full of lamentation, shoka and dukkha and unhappiness. So they all go to the back to their homes. They leave Shiva Sangha. There's no reason to live anymore. They go back to their homes and collapse on the ground and start crying in great separation from Mahaprabhu. Then Awaited Charya. Now the camera switched to Awaited Charya's face and he's so hanging his head down. He's feeling very unhappy. Oh, it's all my fault. All the devotees are lamenting and are in separation. It's all my fault. I made such a Mahaparad. And he's crying. Now this camera switched to another Acharya's house and the Lord's coming in the front front gate and and running in, and running into the temple, sitting, running into the temple because Nanda Acharya is a bit, temple of Lakshmi Narayan. And Lord Chaitanya runs into the temple and sits on the, the Singhasan. And Nanda Acharya hears all the commotion. Oh, my Lord has come. Immediately offers dandavats, then to greet the Lord. He, oh, he said, oh, his clothes are all wet. And he immediately goes for service, brings some new clothes, because the, clothes, the Lord's clothes are all wet, because he jumped in the gung with his clothes on. And beautiful scenery. I mean, unbelievable scenes if you were to, to watch all this in the movie. So tomorrow we'll hear more of the story of how Gurungam Hapu was received by Nanda Nacharya. Sri Chaitanya Bhagavad Ki. So Advaita, he replies to this, to this statement of Mahabharu. Mahapatra Advaita brukuti karinache kimate kaiba prema nara shushi jache Advaita Prabhu, the great recipient of the Lord's mercy, frowned and, and danced as he said, How will you feel ecstatic love? When Nara has drained you. So this is Nara is of course his own name, Nara Narayan, Lord Vishnu. Muni Nahi Pana Prema Napaya Shivas Tilimali Sane Kara Premara Vilas Abaduta Tomar Premer Haila Das Ami Sebahira Ara Pandita Shivas Ami Savanahilana Prema Adhikari Avaduta Si Haila Premara Bhandari Jari More Prema Joga Nadehe Gosai Shushiba Sakala Prema Mora Dosha Nai And wait, it goes on. I do not get love of God and neither does Srivastakor. 
Mahaprabhu, you enjoy your pastimes of ecstatic love with oil millers and gardeners. Avadut, Nitai, has become the servant of your love, while Shivas and I are left out. We are not qualified to attain your love. While this Avadut has come and become the storekeeper of your love. <laughs> He's a prema bandhari. Avadut asi haila prema bandhari. O oh, Gosai, this means Mahaprabhu, if you do not award me your ecstatic love, I will dry it all up. Then do not blame me. So, uh, this is, again, this is from the grandfather. Uh, this is Advaita Charja speaking some sarcasm, some humor. He's in a tech, it sounds like he's criticizing, actually, he's glorifying Mahaprabhu. He's saying, you associate with people of lower castes. Therefore, Shiva's Thakur and I, who are Brahmanas, we're not receiving your love. You're, you're busy distributing your love to, to drunkards and miscreants. Abhadud Nittai has become the only beneficiary of your love. Only you've given your love to him. If you, do, if you do not bestow your love on me, then I'll take it all away. I'll drain it all out. Chaitan Jera Prema Mata Acharya Gosai Ki Balaye Ki Karaye Kichu Smritinai Advaita Gosai was maddened with Lord Chaitanya's love. Prema Mata, Chaitanya Prema Mata. He did not remember what he said or what he, what he did. <laughs> so he was, you know, he was actually speaking a little madly in his madness of love. So it didn't really make much sense everything he was saying because he was a full, full recipient of Mahaprabhu's full, I mean, complete love. Sarva Mate Krishna Bhakta Mahima Badhai Bhakta Gane Jate Veche Tatayvak Vikai Krishna increases the glories of his devotees in all respects. They are able to sell him wherever they want. J Bhakti Prabhave Krishna Vechi Bari Pade Se J Vakya Bali Beke Ki Vichichatari For one who can sell Krishna by the influence of his Bhakti Bhakti Prabhav what is unusual about speaking in this way? So, the way the Chari is in bliss of bhakti and he has so much influence. Nana rupe bhakta bhadai jena gora chandra ki bujite paritana anugraha dhanda Gora chandra increases the glories of his devotees in various ways. Who can understand his mercy and punishment? Takura vishadena Paya prema shuka, suka hate tali dia nache avad advaita kotuka. As Mahabharu lamented due to not receiving the happiness of ecstatic love, Advaita joyfully danced while clapping his hands. <laughs> this is some intimate exchanges on their level. It's a little inconceivable what they're doing, but uh, they're enjoying nonetheless. Advaitera Vakya Shuni Prabhu Vishwambhar Arakichuna Karila Tara Pratyutar. After listening to Advaita's words, Lord Vishwambhar did not make any reply. Se Mata Radadila Guchaya Dhar Pachedaya Nityananda Haridasa Tandra. Mahabharu suddenly opened the door and ran out of Shiva Sangam. Anitinanda and Haridas ran after him. So this is all the ecstatic, prem-filled leelas of the Lord. It's a chinti leela, very inconceivable. Prema shunya sharira tuya kiva kaj chintiya padila prabhu janavira haj Thinking that there was no use in keeping a body devoid of love of God, the Lord jumped in the Ganga. Of course, he's teaching us to become we should become desperate. There's a certain desperation here exuding from these verses. Obviously, the Prem Avatar, Prem Sarup, Radha the Prem Sarup, Vishwambar, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Rasaraj Mahabhav is every 
pore of his body is emanating the deepest, most profound Madanakya Mahabhav, Prem of Radharani for Krishna. But he's teaching something that we're engaged in Sakratan, we're not feeling any joy, no Premano Bhavas. Maybe it's because of Aparads, we've made Vaishnava Aparads. Maybe it's because of bad association. You think of these two points that are being discussed in the last few minutes. Bad association, Pashandis, atheists in the marketplace, atheists in our home, our family atheists, our mother and father atheists, our uncle, Pash- our, uh, uh, uncle Pashandi, <laughs> our Pashandi uncles and aunts, Pashandi brothers and sisters. So any type of bad association from any direction, in the temple, out of the temple, in the marketplace, on Sankirtan, at home, so-called relatives, relative program. So bad association or Vaishnava Aparad can be two causes of worthlessness, making the body worthless. There's no life in the body. A raka pran, not a raka pran. Please save my life. So if we have no life, then we're dead. Very interesting, Lord Chaitanya Singh. Bina prema anabhav. If there's no anabhav, if there's no prema anabhav coming when I'm serving Krishna, shavanam kirtana vishnu smaranam, padasevanam. When I'm engaged in hearing and chanting, remembering Krishna's name and pastimes and form, if I'm not experiencing any anabhavas, then what's the cause? Is it aparad? Is it offenses? Is it nama aparad, vaishnava aparad, seva aparad, dhamma aparad, jiva aparad? Or is it bad association? Do I, wi- do I willfully take the bad association of my material desires? Do I willfully take the bad association of, of gossipers and fault finders among the devotees? Do I, willfully, do I happily take the association of materialistic, atheistic people, friends and so-called old friends and relatives? Because these are causes. And then, and then what does that mean? That means my bhakti is dead. There's no bhakti, there's no bhava, there's no anubhavas arising. So what's the point of living? There's no point in living. And if the, the Vaishnavas don't forgive me, Aparat Shamiya, Shama, they don't forgive me for the, my offenses, then my life is finished. So since nothing, no prem is coming, no love is happening, this body is useless. What's the point? So let me jump into Ganges, commit suicide. The Lord is showing this. Thinking there is no use and keeping a body devoid of prema, the Lord decided to commit suicide. So if that was the standard of modern life, it would be a very small world population today. <laughs> if they say there's six billion people in the world, one and a half billion in China, uh, one billion in India, and the rest around here and there. So there will only be a handful left. <laughs> only be a half a dozen, two dozen, three dozen, Twenty, thirty devotees left that actually have prem on this planet, and everybody else will be in the Ganges, floating dead, or sunk, sinking dead, whatever. So we, when we read this, Mahaprabhu's intensity and his absorption, then we think, well, wait a minute, what am I, what am I doing here? I'm breathing just like the black, just like the blacksmith's bellows, the leather bags with a little pointed instrument coming out. You step on the handles and. It, bags squeeze together and push, 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 push out some hot air to keep the coals burning when you're using an anvil or making some horseshoes or something. The blacksmith, the ironsmith. So <laughs> this body is a big airbag, 60 kilo airbag. Inhalation and exhalation, but not, no production, only air, hot air coming out. Not even hot air, sometimes bad air. <laughs> Stinky air. And not even making any fire, just uh, polluting the air with our carbon dioxide. <laughs> Taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide. We're not even burning coals and making horseshoes. <laughs> At least the blacksmith's bellows produces some useful product like horseshoes. Our breathing doesn't produce anything but carbon dioxide. <laughs> so there's no use... Prema shunya sharir tuyat kiba kaj chintiya padila prabhu janavi maj. I want to merge in the janavi means drown myself. Maja means merge. So he's Mahabhu is running with the speed of wind to jump in the janavi. Ja ma, ma janava. The Ganga and Haridas and Nityananda are running behind him. <laughs> 